Hello, I'm Jamila Masaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of etiquette books. If you're interested in reading my books, make sure to email me at infojamilamusayeva.com. I'll link it here as well down in the description box. If you're a new viewer on my channel, here I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development. If you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. If you're an old viewer, welcome back to my channel. I am delighted to see you here. Today's episode is about a topic that was highly requested ever since I started my channel and that's about jewelry etiquette. But I just didn't want to do it until I had everything ready because I wanted to make this edition especially beautiful for you. So here comes etiquette video on jewelry. But before I get to discuss all the factors that influence our choice of jewelry as well as certain etiquette rules about jewelry, I would like to thank Bulgari Boutique here in Baku for allowing us to do this particular episode here in this beautiful venue. I'd also like to thank them for being so kind and gracious in providing all their beautiful jewelry items for this video. Disclaimer, everything that you get to see in this video does not belong to me. It was graciously provided to us by Bulgari Boutique here in Baku. The name Bulgari is actually derived from his last name Bulgaris, but then it's also transcribed using the Latin alphabet. And the letter U was transcribed as V as a reference to ancient Rome when its first logo was placed in its first store in Italy. Though when you see the logo it shows BVL, it's actually read as BUL. In this video, I'll be showing you some of their very beautiful jewelry items, uh, the most possibly famous collections being Serpanti and Diva. Of course, you'll see a lot more different kinds as well, but these are perhaps the ones that are most recognizable around the world. So what are some factors that will influence our choice of jewelry? There are actually myriad of factors that will influence that, but I've categorized them into two different groups. The first one is the factors that will influence the choice of the metal, so the color of the metal, and there are some factors that will play a significant role in our choice of the dimensions, the size, and how many jewelry items we can layer. So let's get started with the choice of the color. So let's start with a factor that will influence our choice of metal. The most important factor is your undertone. So that's not necessarily your skin tone, but rather your undertone. The skin tone can change over the seasons, but undertone doesn't. I've done an entire episode about finding your undertone. So if you're interested in finding yours, make sure that you do watch this video. I'll link it down below in the comment section as well here. Once you find your undertone, you'll be able to tell which color of metal looks best on you or brightens you up or makes your complexion look even brighter and more glowing. Generally speaking, the warm undertone are better with yellow gold. The cool undertones look best with white gold and the neutral ones can wear whatever they like. Interestingly, I have discovered my undertone a little bit later um, and when I discovered what my undertone is it has helped me immensely in understanding what colors look good on me so not just about the jewelry but also in clothing and makeup I know and a lot of people that see me tell me that I'm fair-skinned but I have a cool undertone so understanding my undertone has helped me identify the metal that looks best on me and that is white gold so white color metals look best on me but also because I have a pinkish tint to my skin, rose gold also looks good on me. Yellow gold does not do me any favor in terms that it doesn't look good on my skin, it doesn't brighten up my complexion, so I have figured out my undertone which is cool and I know that my skin tone is fair and I have a pinkish tint that has helped me to identify that rose gold and white gold look best on me. When it comes to choosing the right jewelry size as well as how many you can stack up or layer, they all depend on multiple factors. For example, your stature, your daily wardrobe, time of the day, occasion, your personality, your profession. So a lot of different factors will influence your choice. 
Let's start with the stature. So that will also influence your choice of jewelry. When I say stature, I mean how tall or small you are, how petite or large you are, your body proportions in general. If you are someone who is more petite, slimmer, then perhaps smaller jewelry pieces will look better on you. If you're someone who has bigger proportions, perhaps chunkier accessories will look better on you. Again, this is not a general strict rule that anyone has to follow. This is a general advice for people when they are trying to make their decision on what kind of jewelry, what size of jewelry to choose. The reason I'm saying this is because and everything that we design, be it your home, be it your interior design, um, be it your overall look, when it comes to design, it's all about creating a harmony. It's all about creating a sort of a peaceful uh, presentation. And when it comes to that, it's all about creating balance. So when we are taller and bigger, bigger things will look better on our proportions. When we are shorter, slimmer, the smaller, finer things will look better on us. It's just about the balance. Next, the time of the day as well as occasion will play a huge role when you decide what to wear in terms of jewelry. Time of the day is general rule with that is that if it's when the sun is out, you go for more subtle, uh, less sparkly, no diamonds was the general rule back in the days. If you watch Breakfast in Tiffany's, there is a moment when they say that diamonds is only supposed to be worn after a certain age and during the evening time. So that was a rule back in the days, but of course in today's modern world, fashion has changed, rules have evolved, and so has etiquette. So you can see people wearing diamonds during the daytime, but I would suggest if we are talking about people who work in a strict office environment or in a corporate office, um, they have to be mindful about diamonds, so better to put them away until the sun has set. So once the sun has set, all this sparkly, beautiful, glowing, big, uh, chunky jewelry items can come out. Again, occasion plays a huge role in the decision as well, um, but when we have to make the choice between occasion and time of the day, perhaps occasion will overweight the time of the day. What I mean by that is perhaps you're invited in the evening to a barbecue party or you're invited in the evening to a housewarming party. This doesn't mean that you have to take out your beautiful <laughs> glowing diamonds out and wear them because it, the sun has set. You have to be mindful of what the occasion is. On the other way, if you're invited to something very fashionable, perhaps during the daytime, a fashion show, you might want to take out some of your more sparkly items out and wear them to that particular occasion. The other big factors that will play a huge role when you decide what to wear as jewelry items is who you are as a person. What do you stand for? What does your personality um, tell to the world around? Who you are? Uh, what do you do for a job? Or perhaps what do you do for your hobby? Who you are as a person when walking out of your house to this world. So that will make a huge difference in what you choose to wear on a daily basis, as well as your daily wardrobe will dictate what kind of jewelry items you can or cannot wear on a daily basis. Um, generally speaking, as I mentioned before, if you work in a corporate world, if you work in offices where there's a strict dress code for work, then you might opt for more subtle, smaller accessories. When choosing earrings, you could go for studs or little huggies. Um, you can have a subtle necklace, you could wear a bracelet, a ring, and a watch. For women, all of that is allowed, um, is permissible to wear on a daily basis. If we are working in a corporate world, one ring per hand is also fine. Again, we need to keep in mind the kind of work that we do on a daily basis. If you're someone who works at the big office when there are a lot of cubicles, people all seated around, and if you meet clients, you do presentations, perhaps you might want to stay away from dangling, noisy accessories because when you type on your computer, when you do the presentation, you don't want to distract people. You don't want to make that uh, annoying, perhaps, sound while typing. You also don't want to take the attention away from what you are offering rather than you know, placing the attention on yourself. So you might want to stay away from big, chunky, noisy accessories. However, if you are a freelancer, perhaps a designer, an artist who works in his own studio and you get to make the decisions, or perhaps you work in an office where there are no strict rules about dress code, you can feel free to experiment and express your personality and use the jewelry items or accessories to show you who you are as a person. In fact, what we choose to wear as jewelry usually speaks a lot louder and speaks more volumes than even our clothing. According to Psychology of Jewelry, people that opt for chunkier, bigger, brighter, bolder accessories are oftentimes extroverts, they like to 
people, for people to pay attention to them. They like to bring attention to themselves. They're quite loud and noisy. And I think accessorize help them in doing that. However, if you are someone who's more introverted, perhaps more conservative or traditional, you might opt for more smaller, subtler accessories. Uh, the choice that we make tells a lot about who we are to the world around us. So when you make that choice, it has to be very personal, unique. Of course, you can consult people for their opinion, but always trust your own instincts when it comes to choosing your jewelry items. In that article about psychology of jewelry, what I discovered about myself, and I didn't know that this actually existed, this kind of diagnosis, is that if the person likes to coordinate the elements as well as the color in their jewelry, this person is very, very much organized. And when I read about it, it was such a eureka moment for me because I do love to combine elements in my accessories or perhaps um, coordinate the color in my accessories. And apparently that says to the world that I'm a very organized person. These were some general factors to take into account, but let's get into more specific etiquette rules regarding jewelry. First rule about stacking and layering. When doing so, you need to choose one specific area that you need to draw attention to. Is it your arm? Is it your fingers? Is it your neck? When you choose that, you pay attention to that particular area and you layer or stack on that particular area. If you do it in multiple areas that might make you look like over-decorated Christmas tree, which you don't want to happen. If, for example, you have an open décolleté and you want to bring attention to your neck, you can use multiple different length of necklaces and layer them like that, therefore draw attention to your neck. It is also permissible to layer two distinct areas far from each other. Let's say you want to draw attention to your arm and perhaps your ears. Then you can layer or stack up different earrings on your ear as well as your arms. However, if you like to layer, let's say your bracelet and your rings, this might be too much stuff on your hands. So when layering, choose areas that are far from each other. Let's say your neck and your arm or your fingers and your ear. This is a general General rule of layering and stacking. When it comes to formal occasions, the rule is that no more than one ring per hand, and that applies to corporate world as well. However, if you're going to more informal occasions, feel free to layer or stack up your rings. The thing about it is that when you do stack your rings, make sure that you stack an odd number in one and an even one on the other, therefore creating a balance. What I mean by that is you can wear three rings on one hand and two rings on the other, and that will make the look complete. When it comes to the choice of the ring, what you need to keep in mind is the size and the length of your fingers. Sometimes when you have really long fingers, you can stack up up until three different rings on one finger. But if you have a shorter one, perhaps you don't want to overload your finger with rings, therefore visually shortening them. If you have shorter rings, I would say opt for more subtle, smaller rings, therefore visually elongating your fingers. Also, speaking of rings, when it comes to making a choice, apart from the length and the size of your fingers, also the color of your nails will influence um, the way that your ring will look on your fingers. Let's say you have a bright, really big stone, beautiful ring that you want to make a statement, then I would advise to have a nude palette manicure for that. Then your nails will not take away the attention and the only attention will be on that ring. On the other hand, if you wear something more subtle, smaller, perhaps just one tone on jewelry with diamonds only and it's just uh, simple enough on its own and the way it's designed then you can go for a more brighter colored manicure you can go for red or burgundy color to bring that attention to the ring as well as well as generally your fingers if you're someone who loves patterns and nail design, then in that case, I would advise you not to buy rings that have a lot of colors or different patterns on them. Because when you have patterned nails as well as something patterned on your fingers, overall, it's not gonna create a balance on your hands. You either tone down on your nails or you tone down on the accessory. Now, the third rule, general rule, is about choosing to use big accessories. And when you make that choice, you need to understand that, again, it's all about creating a balance. So let's say you have a very big chunky bracelet that you want to bring attention to. In that case, when you have a chunky bracelet on your arm, offer rings that are more plain, that are not so overpowering, that they will not take away the attention from the bracelet, or they'll not make someone's gaze go between your bracelet and the ring. The same logic applies to any kind 
kind of accessory. If you have a very beautiful, chunky, sparkly necklace on your neck, then go away, go for something smaller on your ears, perhaps studs or little huggies. If you go for statement um, earrings, then you go for something more subtle on your neck or perhaps no necklace at all. It's all about creating a balanced look and that is understanding the proportions in the jewelry that you intend to wear. Apart from creating a balance, the general rule when it comes to decorating yourself is understanding which area of your body is most exposed or has larger surface area to decorate. Say you're wearing a decollete dress like this, like the one I'm wearing today. So my neck is exposed and so are my arms. My hair is down, so I'm covering my ears almost. In that case, what I would do is I would offer something chunkier and bigger on my neck that can lay flat on my skin and therefore have a better display it so to speak. I would also perhaps go to decorate my arms because they're also much exposed. Uh, because my hair is down I would not wear something big on my ears. However, if I had an hair updo and if I had something that was closing my neck, I would go for bigger necklaces, something chunkier to bring attention to my face. So the general rule is decorate the area that is most exposed or has most skin surface to be decorated and do not overwhelm the clothing. For example, if you're wearing something that is chunkier on top, has a bow on, on the top, perhaps a fluffy top, then you don't want to wear a necklace and overpower that. On the note of speaking about the balance, it used to be the etiquette rule that whatever that you were wearing had to match. So your earrings, your necklace, your ring, your bracelet, and women would usually buy um, this whole entire set of jewelry from one complete collection. However, today again the fashion has evolved, the rules have changed and sometimes when you wear everything matchy-matchy it can you look tacky, some people find it old school, old fashioned. I personally do not disagree or do not agree 100%, I'm somewhere in the middle. I like to match certain accessories from the same collection. Instead of going for the full collection, I like to say three, wear three pieces out of the entire collection. Let's say I opt for earrings, I opt for a bracelet and a ring and I omit the necklace. Next time I wear the necklace, the ring and the bracelet without the earrings. So I actually love to have a combining element or a color in my accessories accessory and that's perhaps because I'm an organized person. If you're like me, feel free to do that but if you like to use different kind of accessories from different collections and mix and match then feel free to do that. Now on to the other rule that's often discussed is the choice of the metal, about mixing metals to be more precise. It again used to be known that all the metals that you're wearing in your accessories had to match. If you're wearing white gold, everything should be white gold, including your belt and perhaps the belt or the chain of your bag, the belt of your bag. But today again, as I said, fashion has changed and people start mix and matching. Some of these mixes look very nice others perhaps look a little bit strange. For me personally, I like to coordinate the entire look when it comes to the color of the metal, so including my jewelry and accessories. If I am going to mix metals, I like to keep it mixed with all the rest of the accessories. So let's say if I'm wearing a ring that is gold, rose gold and another that's white gold, I like to wear a watch that's a mix of rose gold and white gold. So if you are someone who loves to do the same, then you can buy or invest into a pair of watch that has two metals so you can wear it both with rose gold and with white gold. If you're someone whose accessories are mostly yellow gold, then opt for a watch that is a yellow gold. Again, the decision is yours to make, but I like to find a coordinating element, an element that combines all of my accessories. I think it looks presentable, I think it looks balanced, I think it looks harmonious. And that's the kind of a message that I want to transfer to the world. So if you're like me, then feel free to do that. For all the pearl lovers out there, the rule is one pearl at a time, which means you don't wear the entire collection of pearl. So you're the earrings, the bracelet, the necklace, everything at once. The only time this is permissible is when you're going for a formal occasion, like a white tie or a black tie event. For informal occasions, for daily wear, just opt for one particular piece, either be it the earrings or the necklace or the bracelet or the ring. Do not have the entire look on you. It's also advised that the color of your pearls match the rest of the accessories that you're wearing. Say you're wearing pearls with a pinkish tint to it, then feel free to mix it with rose gold. If you have a bleachy white, 
pearls, then you can go for combining it with a white gold. Again, you have to be careful when choosing, selecting the pearls that you purchase, perhaps the only one that you want to invest in. Keep in mind the rest of the jewelry items that you have. Whatever color you have for the majority of your accessories, make sure to buy pearls that will go along with them. Now let's move on to some stricter rules when it comes to uh, wearing a jewelry and that is we do not touch other people's jewelry without their permission. The only person who can do that is a jeweler. If you are not that person, then do not touch someone's accessory without asking them. And worse off, never ask for a price tag. I know in today's world, people feel comfortable sharing a lot about their life, about their purchases, about where they buy and what they buy and for what price. But if you are someone who wants to follow etiquette rules, please do not ask that question. Also, we do not wear jewelry to the gym for obvious reasons. That's not the place where it should be worn and we do not wear them to the bed. Of course, in the sleep, we can make a lot of movements in bed, unconscious movements that can get the metal ruined over time. So if you want to take good care of your jewelry, please do not wear them to the gym or to bed. And the final rule for today is do not spray your perfume directly on your jewelry, especially when you're aiming at your pulse points, if you're wearing a bracelet or a watch, if you're wearing earrings or a necklace and you're aiming at your pulse points, do not spray perfume on your jewelry because when it does so, it can get in touch with the metal and corrode it over time. What I would advise you to do is first apply your perfume, wait for about two to three minutes for it to dissolve or evaporate, and then you put on your jewelry. So here in front of me, I have this beautiful tray with gorgeous, gorgeous jewelry pieces by Bulgari that was so graciously provided to us by the boutique here in Baku. I would like to show some of these pieces and explain how I would use them uh, in a daily life. Um, so we have this beautiful Serpanti watch. So it looks like a snake. It is made of ceramic in a black color and it just looks amazing for daily wear um, because though it has diamonds around uh, the front, um, it doesn't have much uh, on the on the on the body part of the snake so to speak so it looks perfect for daily wear as well as for evening wear like this one i'm currently wearing with my dress and to accessorize it um, there is this beautiful ceramic black ring again with diamonds but because we have an, a dominant color of black it doesn't really make the diamond stand out so much so it's perfect for daily wear as well as for an evening wear for a white tie event for a black tie event basically any formal occasion this is how it looks on my hand uh, and i find it very beautiful it goes amazing with any color clothes um, because it has a black color Next, what I want to show you here is this beautiful watch um, that is a mix of white gold as well as yellow gold. So at first glance, when I first look at this watch, it seemed like this was a rose gold. And apparently the most distinctive part of Bulgari House is that their yellow gold is not so yellowish, it's not so citrusy in its color, it's not so strong, it's more subtle. Therefore, sometimes people who are not familiar with a brand um, do, can confuse it with rose gold. Uh, I love this mixed metal watch uh, with a metal strap. The reason I love it is because A, it allows you to have accessories in all different colors so you can wear it both with white gold and with yellow gold and even with rose gold because again as i said it can be confused for rose gold because it has a much subtler note and what i love about strapped metal watches is that it can be worn as a bracelet so if you're going for a wedding or if you're going for some formal occasion then instead of wearing a bracelet you can just wear this watch and it looks like a bracelet and only women are allowed to wear their watches more or less loosely if they wear it as a bracelet. From the same collection, this watch that has malahide in the middle, this beautiful green color inside and has this very beautiful strap, metallic strap again that could easily be worn as a beautiful bracelet for a wedding or some kind of a formal occasion. If you have some beautiful, perhaps green accessory or you have a beautiful green dress, this will just make the entire look so much more polished and so much more sophisticated. 
Now that we have been talking about decorating our arms with watches, I want to switch our attention to this beautiful, gorgeous Serpenti bracelet. So as you know, Serpenti is a snake. So you'll see this entire collection in the snake uh, coiled-like figure. There are some that have two and there are some that have even three straps. I love this beautiful bracelet because of how gentle and how elegant it looks on the arm. Uh, again, you can pull it all the way up um, if you're wearing something that is exposing your hand and if you're wearing a, a shirt that has long sleeve, again, you can pull it down. Either way, it just looks gorgeous on the hand. Now let's move to decorating our fingers. Here I have this beautiful ring um, that has different kind of colored stones so it depends on what color you love but what i especially love about these rings is that they can be worn individually so you can wear them with different matching colored uh, clothing or perhaps a dress but you can also stack them up so if you have three different color stones you can use the ones that have bigger ones um, in the middle and the two smaller ones um, on the bottom and top and then you can switch around uh, whatever you feel comfortable doing but I love how you can layer it and make it look like it's one ring or you can just wear it individually every day one ring. Using the example of three different kind of colored uh, rings I want you to show you on my skin uh, so you can see as well for yourself that the undertone plays a huge role in choosing the right color metal so here I have the rose gold uh, bulgur ring here I have a yellow gold and here I have white gold if you again look at the rose gold and the yellow gold actually they don't look too much different because again as i mentioned before the very specific feature of this house is that the yellow color is not so yellowish and then the rose gold is not so pinkish or reddish in its in its undertone of the ring so therefore a person who has a cool undertone like me can wear both color rings from this particular brand uh, but if you look at my fingers, you'll see that the best color, the one that brings out my complexion, is the white gold. And the next second best is the rose gold. The yellow one in this particular brand looks fine on me, but in the other brands that have more distinguished yellow color, it doesn't look so good on me. When choosing earrings for daily wear, I love to wear hoops or huggies or studs. Uh, again, depends on what I'm wearing and the general look. If I do have a necklace on, I'll go for huggies or studs. So studs, you already know how they look. And the huggies are the ones that basically hug your ears. Um, these are the little huggies from Bulgari that don't have any diamonds on them. They're perfect for daily wear, but they're also really nice for a cocktail party. Um, and even for perhaps a wedding on the beach um, or um, let's so to speak less dressed up wedding. Um, these are really nice investments. So if you're looking for something that you can wear particularly anywhere, then these Huggies from Bulgari are just amazing. I personally am a huge fan of hoops and these hoops from Bulgari are especially amazing. They don't have any diamonds on, which is very hard to find in a lot of other brands. What I love about it is that it looks amazing, daytime, evening time, turtleneck, um, dress, shirt, white t-shirt, uh, sweater, any look goes with hoops, I think personally. But my personal advice would be not to perhaps wear something um, long on your neck, perhaps no necklace or a pendant, and just the hoops will do perfectly fine for daily wear. Uh, so these are my personal favorites. With this particular dress that is decollete that has an open neck and open chest, the best way to decorate is, is to wear something that will lay flat on my neck and just accentuate it better. So with this look, I would wear something that is chunky, big on my neck. I would wear smaller neck, smaller earrings on my ears because I don't want to draw attention to my ears. Here, the statement is all about the necklace. And then I'll wear something that is more decorative on my arm because my arms again are Exposed and something more smaller, subtler on my hand. Um, again, that goes along with the whole look, complements the whole look, but doesn't draw attention away from the bracelet and the necklace. If, for example, I wear uh, something with a deep V-neck, then in that case, I will go for a necklace that is 
uh, longer that can enter, so to speak, that V area. Um, so this necklace with a pendant would look, go perfectly well uh, with a V-neck dress or perhaps a V-neck sweater. So if you're wearing this, this will just drop inside and then to complement this pendant necklace, I'd wear again something that is more smaller and subtler on my ears um, that will again not take attention away from the necklace itself. When it comes to choosing the right necklace for your wear, you have to keep in mind what is the neckline of that top or dress that you're wearing. If you're wearing a dress that's decollete or that has a round shaped top, then you would wear a necklace that would repeat that shape, that would also be round. If you're wearing something that has a deep v-neck, then you would wear again a necklace that repeats that shape, that goes down into that v. Uh, shape. So we fill in the space that is exposed and accessorize look best on a flat skin rather than on top of the clothing because then we don't really pay much attention to the accessory itself but rather to what it looks like together with a dress. So if you want to draw attention only to the statement piece that you're wearing, make sure that you place it on your skin alone. Also when you are uh, combining different elements from different kind of collections, feel free to do that, feel free to experiment. But what I would suggest is at least have a combining element in all of that. So here I'm wearing this necklace and earrings and ring and bracelet from different collections, but there's sort of a combining element either in the color or the color of the stone or perhaps the general shape of the accessory. So overall making me look cohesive and coherent. And the final piece that I want to show you today is an exclusive one that's only available here in Baku. So if you're going after this piece, make sure that you visit Azerbaijan and stop by the Bulgari boutique here in Baku. And this is a medallion choker necklace that looks like this. I have shown it on my Instagram page. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please make sure that you do. I do a lot of interesting posts there. So this is a choker necklace. I think it looks just amazing on your neck. You can adjust it to, to the size that fits your neck. It's a beautiful gift. It is an exclusive one. So if you are going for something exclusive that only you will have, then this is a place to shop. And there's also a complimentary bracelet that goes along with this um, choker necklace. And I think it just looks stunning. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed filming this for you. By the way, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, a like, so that I become YouTube's algorithm's favorite child. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.